Happy Sunday, everybody. Now, this is the latest news surrounding your Ford stimulus payments. Nearly 3 million Americans have signed a petition that calls for $2,000 stimulus checks for every American. But many people across the country are wondering whether the Ford stimulus check will arrive this month or even next month. So you guys want to stay tuned for the important stimulus check news. Now, everybody, here's what I want you to know. A Ford stimulus check, everybody, from the government could take one or two forms. And that is in the monthly checks in fairly small amounts or one-time payments of up to $2,000. Which of these do you prefer, folks? A monthly stimulus check or one-time big lump sum of stimulus money? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. And we are talking about health care, an issue that is as personal as it is important. President Joe Biden and I believe that health care, for that reason, must be a right, not a privilege, a right to which all people are entitled. We also believe health care in the form of health insurance. Both options have been put forward by legislators in Congress as follow-up to the third round of crisis relief efforts, which were all made possible by the American Rescue Plan of March. Seven Democrats in the House Ways and Means Committee sent a letter to President Biden urging him and his, urging him and his administration to add a fourth and even a fifth stimulus check to the American Families Plan announced earlier this spring. And Democrats are going to have to gather enough support in order for the bill to be passed. Still folks, just know this, the IRS can begin sending out possible fourth stimulus checks in the same manner that it sent the previous stimulus payments. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again, talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. Just go look at the debate with Paul Ryan for the vice presidency. Look at what I did. And that is because the framework is already in place. Americans can begin receiving a stimulus checks about two weeks after relief bill, allowing another round of direct payments to be approved. In all, 26 states have cut the extra $300 in weekly benefits before the federal expiration, while 22 have also canceled the unemployment assistance program for workers who don't normally qualify for regular unemployment insurance and the emergency unemployment compensation program that provides extra weeks of benefits. Unemployed workers in the state of Missouri are also suing their governor for ending federal unemployment programs early. And according to multiple sources, more than 4 million workers across the states have lost a total of around $22 billion in potential benefits. Would be the text of a compromise bill that a group of senators are working on. Let me be very clear. This is a debate the Senate must have. In America today, we are witnessing the most sweeping and coordinated tax on voting rights. Nearly three in five workers affected by the early expirations have been left with no benefits at all. Many people are suffering, everybody, since the unemployment benefits have just been cut. Do you believe they should have been extended, folks? Tell me in the comments below. Now, the latest lawsuit comes as lawsuits in Arkansas, Indiana, and Maryland have all been successful, while those in Louisiana and West Virginia have been, not, have been denied by judges. Enhanced jobless benefits, everybody, which include $300 weekly bonus checks, as well as assistance for freelancers and long-term unemployed, are getting closer to the expiration date of September 6th. Some two dozen states had already chosen to pull the plug early on crisis-related coverage, with governors claiming the benefit was disincentivizing out-of-work residents from filing jobs. Labor Department officials, folks, have said their hands are tied and cannot count the decisions by state governors. Moreover, White House officials have indicated that they will not continue the enhanced jobless, jobless benefits past September in the other states, saying they were intended to be temporary. President Biden did underline that it makes sense for those supplemental unemployment benefits to expire in 90 days. So, President Biden, Republicans, and Democrats want to cut off the unemployment benefits that is so crucial to many Americans across the country. Do you approve of this, everybody? Leave a comment down below saying yes or no. In remarks on the economy back in May, Biden had reaffirmed the guidelines for receiving federal unemployment insurance. He said, we're going to make it clear that anyone collecting unemployment who is offered a suitable job must take the job or lose their unemployment benefits. According to the Department of Labor, if you turn down a suitable job, you can be denied unemployment benefits. Now everybody, unless your state is one of those that have opted out, the enhanced unemployment benefits will continue through Labor Day on September 6th. 
that's granting a $300 weekly federal bonus on top of what the state pays. The extra money can allow unemployment recipients to receive a total of $7,500 for the 25 weeks, spanning from March to September. And while unemployment rates are lower than they were before, as of this April, some 16 million Americans were still receiving some kind of job as aid. Given Biden's most recent marks, you guys have to know this. It may be possible that enhanced benefits will be renewed after Labor Day. There are some in my caucus who may believe it's too much. There are some in my caucus who believe it's too little. The original bill that Senator Sanders put in was $6 trillion. I supported that. And um, I can tell you this in reconciliation. One, we are going to all come together to get something done. And two, it will have every part of the Biden plan in, big, in a big, bold, robust way. Manu, Manu, you can follow up. As I said, every part of Biden's proposal will be there in a big, robust way. There are some members in our caucus who want less, some members in our caucus who want more. That's same in the House. We're going to all come together to meet that goal. Yes, we go through Voterama all the time. It has no effect on the bill when you compare the the amazing breadth and strength and depth of the 3.5 trillion we passed, this is a small little thing that means nothing. Yes, in the back, red dress. Was yesterday morning the last routine of bipartisan? I hope not. As you've seen, I always try to do bipartisan stuff when we can. And this Senate has done far more bipartisan stuff than ever when McConnell was there. And my moderate members know that, appreciate it, and have thanked me for it. So, for instance, we had before the infrastructure bill, which we had a, had a push, prod, and I was very instrumental in trying to making sure it got done. And, uh, you know, that's what the gang of five says, our five Democrats. Um, we had USICA, took three weeks, bipartisan. We had the Asian crimes bill, bipartisan. We had the water bill, bipartisan. We had the, trans war the transport bill, bipartisan. And we've had more amendments this year, skipping Votorama, which, of course, is an exercise all unto itself. Yep. Well, first, I would say many, so many people were dubious we could get anything done, including many of you in this room. Can't get the ARP done. Never get the president's cabinet done in time. Never will this two-track strategy, it's going to be impossible for it to succeed. So far, so good. How come? A. I try, and I try, and I think our caucus tries to show respect for every single member. We have a diverse caucus. We have Bernie Sanders, we have Joe Manchin, and everybody in between. And we show respect. We don't belittle or denigrate or anything. 